So in building furniture, there are several different types of screws uh, that are used. Um, I use screws all the time uh, building furniture. Uh, there are parts of particularly a large piece or a cabinet that might be made up of several modules or components that are then joined together. However, you've got to be careful to use the right screw in uh, a, a, any particular application. Okay, so here, here's a, a small selection of screws that I use commonly in the assembly of furniture and, and cabinetry. Um, here we've got a flathead uh, screw, and I'll use this uh, in just uh, uh, joining the pieces perpendicular to one another. Again, I'll, I'll countersink the head so that the surfaces of the modules, when they're connected, are flush and there's no protruding screw head. Um, this smaller one here I'll use for attaching uh, uh, hinges and for uh, draw slides and other hardware. Um, here we've got a pan head. I'll use this for uh, assembling uh, frames and uh, in pocket screw applications. And here I have a washer head screw that I'll use in applications where I've got to allow for wood movement. So in this situation, I, I'm going to attach this cleat to this wider board. Uh, I'm going to be using a countersunk screw. That's, uh, these two pieces are each three quarters of an inch. I'm using a screw that's an inch and a quarter. Um, in this case, I'm going to be using a, a one-piece uh, countersink uh, uh, drill bit. So this is one convenient way to um, uh, take care of the three uh, component parts um, required to drill a hole when attaching these uh, pieces together. So this is a tapered bit and it, it's running through a, a countersink. Um, I can use this on a drill press or I can use it freehand. All right, so if you don't have a, a tapered countersink bit, um, you'll, you'll have to use three separate bits to achieve the same effect. So here I would be using this thinner bit that corresponds to the shank of the screw. Uh, this, is, this larger bit is going to give me the, the clearance uh, hole, and then I finally have my countersink. So using something like this is going to save you a lot of time and a lot of trouble. All right, so here I've got a flathead screw sent to us by the folks at Quick Screw with a Type 17 uh, tip. So here you've got a sort of chisel tip, and then the underside of this, of this screw head has these little fins on there, and that's what it will allow me to seat that screw uh, flush or slightly below the surface of the wood. And the purpose of this is to uh, sort of uh, not require uh, any pre-drilling. That's pretty good. All right, so often assembling furniture might require that you're going to attach one piece to another cross grain. If I don't allow for wood movement, uh, depending on the width of the, of the panel, I can get into some serious trouble a little bit later down the, down the road. I typically figure that wood's going to move about an eighth of an inch for every 12 inches of, of width. So um, taking these precautions is really uh, essential. I've routed an elongated groove, um, and then I've put two clearance holes, uh, one alongside the other, um, to ensure that the screw is going to move within that slot. Um, here I'm going to be using the, um, the washer head screw. Um, if I set that washer head screw in there, um, you can see that the that the underside of that, of that screw is riding along that elongated slot. And this is clearly enough uh, space to avoid any problems with wood movement. So here, uh, I'm going to be using pocket screws to join frames. This is a great system that avoids a lot of complex joinery and saves a lot of time while producing uh, strong, square, and flat uh, cabinet components. Um, here, I've pre-drilled uh, these, these holes uh, at this extreme angle, and that sort of sets it all up for the installation of these screws. Um, we've got two different types of screws here. This one 
here um, uh, being f uh, has, has a coarse thread, and I would use this for the soft woods. And this one here having a, a, a tighter uh, thread would be for uh, hard woods. Uh, I'm going to insert that screw into that pre-drilled hole, and I'm um, going to drive that in gently. And as the piece comes home, it'll actually draw these pieces in nice and tight. So in addition to strength, one of the features that I like most about this type of joinery is that it will produce these parts perfectly flush on the, on the face side, requiring just the lightest sanding. In certain situations, you might need to join two pieces together perpendicular. However, I'm drilling through the face of one piece and into the end grain of the other. Now that presents certain problems because the end grain will tend to split when the end grain is, is intruded upon by a screw. But eventually, any stress placed on that joint will pull that screw out. So one really cool way to deal with that problem is to drill a hole and it can be, this one here is half inch, it could be three eighths of an inch. Uh, and into that hole I'm going to set a hardwood dowel. So now what I've got is long grain material that's sort of going across the joint. Again, we're dealing with pieces that are narrow enough not to be concerned with wood movement. Right. So I've got my pieces lined up like so. And I'm going in. And now, the, the, the countersink is extended far enough to seat itself into the pre-drilled holes on the face piece, but also that drill bit is extending into the thickness of that dowel. So now when that screw is inserted, it's going to go into the end grain, but it will eventually engage that dowel. Here we go, rock solid. I'll cut that flush and we're ready to go.